Now that you've completed editing in Darkroom, you're ready to share your images with the world. But how? Well, the answer lies within this tutorial. So if you're ready, let's do it. All right, in Darktable here, make sure you're in the Lighttable view. Select an image or images that you want to export and click on Export Selected. And you have a ton of options to choose from before you export your images. We're going to go over each one of these items so you know what they do and which ones you should select. But keep in mind, some of these are very advanced options and are beyond the scope of this tutorial because entire books have been written about them and we can't cover everything in this tutorial. But once you're done with this video, you will know how to export your images and which options I recommend using. So the first thing you need to do is tell Darktable where to export the file. So click on this icon here and choose the destination. Under that, we have an item here called Create Unique File Name, which is going to append a number at the end of that file name. If you click here, you also have Overwrite, which will overwrite the original file. And you also have Skip, which will skip renaming the file. But if the original file is in that same folder location, it will overwrite it. So I don't recommend either one of these. It's nice to have a number appended to the file name so that you can keep them together if you decide to put them in the same folder. And then under that, we have to set the format or the file type of the image when exported. By default, we have JPEG selected. If you click on it, you get this menu here with additional file formats. If none of these look familiar to you, then you won't need to use them. In fact, I would think 99% of the time, JPEG will be sufficient for most of your projects, especially if you're posting online. JPEG is sufficient. Even when I do print enlargements, I still use JPEG 8-bit and I find my prints are perfect with that file format. Next, you need to set the quality of that JPEG file. So you can set this between 0 to 100. 100 is the highest quality and I set mine to 80 for the quality. It just means a smaller file and it may not be as good as 100, but I can't see the difference unless I'm pixel peeping. In other words, I'm zooming in real close and putting that print enlargement right up against my face. I'm not going to see the difference when it's hanging on the wall or sitting on my desk. All right, so under that, we have an option to set the size of the file on export. By default, it's going to set the size to be the same as your raw file. If you want to change it, you can adjust the width and the height accordingly. You can set it in pixels, centimeters, or inches, or by scale. So if you want to create an 8x12 print, you would type in 8 for the width, 12 for the height, and then the DPI, or what is known as dots per inch. So that's the resolution here, 8 by 12 by 300. If you're going to be using the images for online use, then you would use pixels. So now that same 8 by 10 print is now 2400 by 3600 pixels per inch. The other thing you can do is you can leave the width or the height set to zero, and then you can adjust the width or the height accordingly to whatever you need, let's say 800 pixels wide, and then Darktable will adjust the height automatically to keep your image in proportion. And this is useful when you're sending images to a social media site that requires a specific width. All right, so this next option, allow upscaling, I recommend using when you set the size of the dimensions to be larger than the original raw file. And what this option is going to do, when you set it to yes, is it's going to improve the quality of the image because you're making it larger than the original. And oftentimes, images will become jagged or pixelated due to the extra pixels that have to be created when making it larger since they were not there originally. So long story short, use upscaling when the dimensions are larger than your original. 
The next option, high quality resampling, is another way to improve the quality of your images because it's going to process that image or the export in a different order in order to create a higher quality image. But the downside is it's going to take a lot longer when you have this set to yes versus to no. But if a high quality file is of importance to you, I would recommend using this option here. The next option is grayed out for JPEG file formats. And it's not until you select something that can store masks like an XCF file, which is a GIMP file format, will you be able to store masks with that file. Under that, we have the color profile that you want to export to. If you're only putting images online, sRGB is the way to go. I even use this sometimes for prints. If I'm sending to my home printer, I will choose one of these other options that closely relates to the color profile of my printer. So again, like I mentioned before, color profiles are something you're going to need to spend a little bit more time learning about. But for now, for 99% of your images, sRGB should be sufficient until you have some understanding of these other ones and know when to use them and when not to use them. The next option here, Intent, is another advanced type of setting that you're going to need to learn more about. And what this does is Darktable is going to render your images that have out of gamut colors based on the option that you have selected here. So if you don't know what a color gamut is, that's something else you need to learn about if you want to take advantage of this option here and have higher quality images on export. The next option called style is like presets and it will allow you to apply specific edits that you saved and you can apply those on export. It's something that I usually do during the editing process and not something I do on export but you do have that option to apply them during the export process. Now, if you decide to use a style on export, you can choose to have that style appended to or overwrite the history stack of that image. I would recommend appending it, but not overwriting it because you may want to go back at a certain point and take a look at those different editing steps you took for a particular image. So the last decision to make is right inside of here. If you click right here, you get a new window called Edit Metadata Exportation. So from here, you can tell Darktable what metadata you would like applied or included in the image. And these are all the default settings and you may or may not want to turn these off. One you may want to consider turning off is geotags. Let's say you're taking some pictures at home and your camera or your smartphone is adding geo information. Well, with that information, somebody can find out where you live if you're posting these online. So if you don't want people to know where you live, go ahead and uncheck geotags. And maybe you don't want tags either. Maybe you're using the names of your kids or your spouse or other family members and you don't want to include the names because you want to give them some privacy, you might want to turn off the tags option as well. And then once you save that, it's going to be sticky. So the next time you export, those same settings will still be there. All right, now that you spend all this time going through and setting this up, you may want to save this as a preset so you don't have to come back and do this every single time. Now, that being said, this is sticky information. In other words, when you come back tomorrow, next week, whatever, these settings are still going to be there. But maybe you're exporting images to Facebook one day, and then the next day you want to export images for Instagram, and the file size or the dimensions of that file are different for both platforms. Well, you can come up here and click right here and click on Store New Preset and give this preset a name. You can call it Facebook. And then you can select that preset from here. And then those export options that you set for Facebook will repopulate according to that preset. 
Now, the moment you've been waiting for, you can click on export and Darktable will begin exporting your image. Have you ever wondered how to edit raw files with GIMP? Find out by clicking on the video to your left. Click it, click it, click it right there. Find out in that video. Watch that one next. All right. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.